Did you catch that? Let's go back a bit. This is pitch relevance mapping, and it's exactly what it sounds like. High notes to the right, low notes to the left. A super simple concept that can help with object placements within your maps, and gives your patterns a bit more context and meaning. Now, because this is 4K, we're kind of limited with how much we can adhere to such rules, so let's bump it up to 7K. This map starts off with good PR. I like how each repetition is staggered to induce variation within the map, but it still maintains that relative pitching, yet the mapper decides to mirror this pattern on the next measure. Sometimes you do have to deviate from strict PR, and I'll go into some more in-depth examples later in the video, but in this specific case, the mapper could have just continued with the same direction they set up in the beginning, especially since this part of the song is so simple. Let's take a look at another map, and I'll open up two difficulties this time. You'll start to realize that a lot of piano songs can benefit from this type of mapping, but it also works with other genres of music. For these two difficulties, you can start to see why it's more of a relevance thing, and not absolute. In a lot of these parts, the map is following the pitch of the music, but there's different spacing between the columns and even different chord sizes, which helps make each difficulty distinct while still representing the music. Once we get into the stream part of the map, the mapper is probably more concerned about preserving playability and balancing column usage between the two hands, and streams tend to follow a different set of rules, such as making sure the chords flow nicely within the streams. Even on the top difficulty, the mapper is layering in some long notes, yet they're not exactly following the song's pitch, as it would probably be hard to layer both patterns accurately like that, and to maintain a level of playability, even for a 5-star map. On one of my maps, it seems like I was trying to follow the pitch with these patterns, but I'm not exactly doing it. Yet, I did create this pattern which mirrors each hand and sort of follows the descending nature of the song, and it probably adds better playability in this section as the song builds up to the drop. So, a lot of the times, you really have to make a judgement call of how well you're willing to follow the song's pitch, and whether or not it would make the playability and flow of the map better. Yuki no Hana is an example of the opposite of this, and then it follows pitch relevance very strictly, which leads to a better playing experience. A lot of the times, 10k mappers will lay each finger to its counterpart on the other hand, rather than a clone structure like this, so this is why a lot of maps have symmetrical or mirrored patterns, as it's probably easy for the player to understand this as well. But Yuki no Hana follows the pitch to the point where the fingers don't match up in the mirrored way, but they do in a left to right way. You see this in a lot of 10k 2s charts, where the mapping is more of a 5 plus 5 style, and the hands feel a bit disconnected between each other, where the pitch relevance remains consistent. Now, I know I've been somewhat making this seem a little complicated, but it's a really simple mapping concept that you're probably implementing in your own maps without even realizing. I looked through a lot of my more recent 10k maps, and it seems like I was trying to go for it, but I'm missing the mark more often than not, and it can make some of these patterns feel random. Even when going for symmetry, it can still follow the pitch, but this just seems completely incorrect. In another map, I had an interesting concept here with the build-up, but completely missed out on simply having the long notes ascend with the pitch. Also, leading into the start of a stream on a blue take is really awkward. So yeah, I'm probably gonna have to remap this entire difficulty at some point. The last of my maps I want to look at is Color for Minutes. I received a mod a while ago, and this is one of the earliest instances where I was made aware of pitch relevance, and it actually made this whole beginning section play a lot better. Looking at the other hand, the long notes aren't following the pitch at all. This was one of my earliest 10k maps, so I was more concerned about making sure the column spacing was balanced, but that'll be a topic for another video. Since I've had this map for a while now, and there's been quite a bit of support from the 10k plus community, I'm going to quickly do a remap while pointing out the instances where pitch relevance could improve aspects of the map. I already mentioned about the beginning part, so I just adjusted the long notes to be more pitch accurate. I don't have perfect pitch though, so I mean it's good enough. I'm keeping most of the bursts how they are. There was a lot of back and forth in the mods about how most of my bursts were very centered and didn't touch the outer columns much, so I already made those adjustments. For the key of time, I did have this sort of mirrored repetition thing with the long notes, but I adjusted some parts here and there to follow the pitch better. Here I am mirroring this little chord pattern so that it feels like the right hand notes are descending. Even something simple as rearranging the long notes can make a noticeable difference. I have the pitch completely backwards in most of these parts, so fixing it would just be mirroring the right hand on itself. So, like this. For this part, you can sometimes split up the two hands like this, and treat each column like high versus low independently, like in Yuki no Hana. I made the same mistake as before with the backwards pitch, so I'll mirror it accordingly. And same with these notes. Because 10k has so many columns, it's easy to mirror or shift notes to fit the desired style you're going for, without losing too much structure from the original. I kept the long notes isolated on one hand during this measure, and at times it was kind of difficult discerning the pitches, but as long as it's close enough, then I guess it's good. As far as pitch relevance goes, that's all that really fits with this song. As in the later sections, I mapped most of the long notes to the vocals, and for the beginning parts, the piano was more prominent, and those have been fixed accordingly. So I feel this map does a better job of reflecting the music, and even plays more smoothly this way. Just thinking about the song's pitch gave me a better method about how I should place objects within the playfield, and the map is completely perfect now. Well, okay. Pitch relevance is not some strict rule you have to follow at every moment in your map. It's a tool to be used when you want to provide a more immersive experience, or if you need some guidance with object placement, especially in higher key counts. 
Sometimes you have to avoid using PR if you want to maintain a level of playability in your map, or if you're going for a more symmetrical stylized pattern. It's an interesting yet simple concept that can really change how you think about mapping.